Do you wake up from nightmares about not having enough downforce? Does your definition of exhaust work only involve one tool? Do you only fill up with 93 octane because your new air filter means you now drive a race car? So, active aero is nothing new been around on cars for a pretty long time. However, it's usually only on the really fast cars, you know, the ones that need it and it makes sense and it, you know, keeps them on the road. But what about the cars that think they're fast, all right? The ones that drink seafoam and bleed octane booster. Those cars, those cars need active aero. That is why I came up with this. It is a spoiler that goes in the back of your car and it pitches up and down and it's way too exaggerated. Uh, it does nothing besides destroy your gas mileage and potentially like rip off your trunk. I'm not sure he's still out on that one, uh, but it's sick. So the way that I built this is it started off by cutting out the airfoils on my foam cutter out of a piece of foam. Then I put a piece of fiberglass on the bottom to give it a little bit more rigidity so it won't just crack in half. Um, and then I coated it in a whole bunch of Bondo and epoxy. So to actuate the wing, there are two servos, one on each side, and they rotate to pitch it up. So you can do, you know, here's a stowed position, and then if you want to go full air brake mode, here it is. Um, it can go anywhere in between, and it chooses that based on your acceleration. So to control this, there is an Arduino Nano right here, as well as an MPU6050, which is an IMU, so it'll be able to sense the acceleration of the car, and from that we can extrapolate how fast the car is moving, and whether it's braking, accelerating, etc. From there, we can pitch the wing up and down to make it look sick. Up front here, I have a I think it's 1800 milliamp hour two cell battery just to power everything. Um, you could probably power from your car, but that's, I don't want to do that to my car. Now I put a bunch of time into trying to get this smooth and then painting it and sanding it again and painting it more Bondo. It, it took forever. And honestly, I'm still not happy with the surface finish. Maybe I'm just awful at body work. I don't know. But, um, if I've learned anything from engineering, it is when you have a problem, just throw carbon fiber out, all right? So we have carbon fiber vinyl wrap, which we're going to put on this thing. You know, problem, carbon fiber, fixed. It's easy, all right? This is engineering. Boom. So I've never done this before, so I don't, this might go very wrong. So putting on this vinyl wrap ended up taking like 45 minutes. So rather than just watching a time lapse of that, which is boring, uh, let's talk about how active aero or spoilers in general are supposed to work. So I want to preface this by saying that I'm not extremely qualified to talk about fluid mechanics. I've had like two classes on the subject, so take that for what it's worth, um, but I'll do my best. So on a standard wing, like the ones on an airplane, the geometry of the wing, as it moves through the air, creates a low pressure zone above it and a high pressure zone below it. The difference in pressure above the wing and below the wing results in a force that exerts itself upwards, and we call that lift. So in these animations, the colors represent the velocity of the fluid. So you can see above the wing, it's red and yellow, which means it has a high velocity and thus a low pressure. However, underneath the wing and right behind the wing, it is, you know, a blue-green color and that means that it has a lower velocity and thus a higher pressure. So for a spoiler, our intent is actually the opposite of an airplane's wing. Rather than try to pick up the vehicle, it's to press the vehicle into the ground. And this can be done by simply flipping the airfoil around. This means that the high pressure zone is now created above the airfoil, and the low pressure zone is created below the airfoil, and that difference in pressure results in a force 
forcing the car down. So this animation actually shows the exact same thing. You can see the high pressure zone above the spoiler and the low pressure zone created below the spoiler. One other cool thing is you can actually see that there's a low pressure weight created by this airfoil because the trailing edge, when it's flipped upside down, is actually at a pretty high angle of attack compared to the free stream velocity. So a lot of times when cars have active aero, they can actually use their spoilers as an air brake. This is done by tipping the spoiler at a very high angle of attack. This creates a massive low pressure zone behind the spoiler and creates what's called pressure drag. Pressure drag happens because you now have a high pressure zone in front of the spoiler and a low pressure zone behind it and that creates a net resultant force acting backwards on the car. So in this animation you can see that the streamlines completely separate from the airfoil and create a swirling low pressure zone behind the spoiler. This animation shows the exact same thing. However, you can see there's what looks to be like vortex shedding behind the spoiler. And this makes sense because a lot of times you get that vortex shedding behind blunt bodies. But anyway, I thought that was really cool. Okay, so that was a nightmare. Um, turns out there is some skill involved in vinyl wrapping things. Who would have guessed? Um, but now we should be able to reassemble it and then Go test it out. So to attach the wing to the back of my car, I don't really want to use bolts for obvious reasons. So I'm using these suction cups. Um, they have a knob on the back that you can tighten down to make sure you have a really tight seal. So hopefully they stay on. Um, I guess we'll find out. So after it's attached, all you have to do is turn it on and you're ready to go.